Let's have a second conversation on the Thevenin Helmholtz equivalent circuits. Because it does not end here. Previously, we have seen how Helmholtz and Thevenin and Meyer and Norton they came up with this wonderful idea of replacing a linear circuit with a simplifying equivalent circuit that has only one source and one resistor. VTH and RTH for the Thevenin equivalent. And we have seen that to find the value of that source VTH and that resistor RTH we need only two tests the open circuit test and the short circuit test. In the first one we measure directly the value of the source VTH and in the second one we measure or we compute on paper with m and a what is the value of the short circuit current and with that we compute what is the value of the resistor R7 and RTH. Measuring the open circuit voltage of a port is fine and we can even do that in a laboratory but short circuiting the port of a live circuit may not be such a good idea, no. Today we learn other methods that we can use to find those two parameters the two resistors method and one method, the two current sources method that I call sometimes the UBC method because that is a method that I myself concocted for the sake of my students here at UBC. It does not need a short circuit test which is something that's been given grief to many students I've known over the years and secondly it applies perfectly to the HP50G which is an equipment my students here at UBC use. In the classic method, we perform the open circuit test and the short circuit test. We take the circuit and at the port we compute using MNA or in the laboratory we measure with voltmeter what is the open circuit voltage VOC. Next, we short circuit the port and determine the value of the short circuit current ISC. Mm -hmm. In a real-life circuit, as I said, short-circuiting a circuit port may not be a great idea. In those real-life circuits, we can use this alternative and safer method. Open circuit test, we measure the open circuit voltage and that is VTH directly. That is fine, same as before. But next, instead of short-circuiting the port, we apply a resistor with a known value of our choice, RA, and once we connect that to the port, we measure the voltage that appears across the resistor, VA, or we compute that with MNA. And then what? Well, think of it. In the actual circuit, we connect the resistor, let's say RA, and then we measure what is the voltage VA that appears. If that circuit and this one are truly equivalent to one another, when we connect the same resistor RA to this port in the equivalent circuit, the same voltage VA must appear. Where do we know that VA from? From the real circuit on the left. We measured that voltage in the circuit on the left and we know that should appear on the circuit in the right. The current that flows is given by Ohm's law VA divided by RA. That current will produce a voltage drop in the resistor R7 and that will be given by Ohm's law RI. R7 multiplied by the current VA divided by RA. Now we can write a KVL equation around that loop going up by V7 and going down by the drop in the resistor RTH and going down by VA. We can rewrite the equation this way where we have moved the known term VA to the right. In that equation we know RA. Of course we chose it. We know VA. We measured that in the lab in the circuit on the left and we have two unknowns VTH and RTH. So we have one equation two unknowns. We need another equation. 
if we have performed the other test as an open circuit and we've already determined who is VTH, we can simply solve for RTH and we have V7 and obtained from the open circuit test minus VI, the voltage that we measured in this uh, resistor test, multiplied by RA divided by VA. But let's say uh, that uh, we do not do an open circuit test, we just apply a second resistor. In this case, we need another equation, pick another resistor RB, and connect it to the port. Measure the voltage VB that appears, and apply that to the equivalent circuit. Again, the same analysis for current for drop in R7 and and for the KVL equation. Another equation, same unknowns VTH and RTH. We have now two equations and two unknowns. Let's write them together from the first test, RA, and from the second test, RB. Two equations and two unknowns VTH and RTH. Piece of cake. As I said, if we've already done Instead of um, applying a resistor for the first test, we apply an open circuit test. Then we find our Thevenin directly with this simpler formula. Tutorial time. Let's say we have a circuit, and at the output port of that circuit in the lab, we connect a 3 kilo ohm resistor. A voltmeter at that port reads 3.75 volts. The resistor then is replaced by a second resistor with a value of 6.2 kilo ohms and the voltage at that port changes to 5.536 volts. The question is of course find the Thevenin and Helmholtz equivalent. Find VTH and find RTH. 3 kilo ohms is RA, is the value of the first resistor, and the voltage that appears is VA, 3.75 volts. So 6.2 kilo ohms is RB, and 5.536 volts is VB. Write the equations, solve for VTH and RTH, and next we draw the equivalent circuit. That is the solution to that exercise. Are we done? No, we are not done. This exercise is for your entertainment, even though it's not properly related to what I've said. Now let's concentrate on my method, the two current sources, the UBC method, right? In this method, we work on paper, not in the lab. We apply to the port of interest a current source a current source with a value of our choice I sub A, like so. When we do that, of course, a voltage will appear at that port. Let me call that voltage VA. That's going to be a number from a voltmeter. In reality, on paper, a value that we compute with m a If that circuit is truly equivalent to this one, when we connect that current source to the equivalent one, the same voltage VA that I have obtained with the MNA from the circuit on the left must appear. Mm -hmm. Now that current IA of the source must produce a voltage drop in that R7 with the value RI, isn't that so? RTH, IA. And with those three voltages we can write a KVL equation around the loop going up by VTH going down by RTHIA oh. going up by VTH going up by RTHIA going down by VA that equals zero let me move VA to the right hand side we have one equation where we know IA the current source value we chose we know VA which is the voltage that we computed with M and A in the real circuit on the left and we have two unknowns VTH and RTH of course what do we do we repeat 
the same exercise but with a different value of the current source. Apply a current source IB and compute the voltage that appears at the port VB like this appears. And we repeat the same the same analysis to the circuit on the right and write the second equation. We have then two equations and two unknowns VTH and RTH. Let me write them together from the first test and from the second test. Two equations and two unknowns. In general, I can write the M and A equations in the real circuit applying a generic current source IX, a voltage VX should appear. When we write the M and A equations, we substitute VX for IA and we obtain VX is VA. And then we edit the same equations and change IX for IB and obtain that VX this time is VB. We can get away with writing the M and A equations only once and solving them twice. They are different only in the values IA and IB. Not clear? Okay, let me show you an example. In this circuit, I apply a 1 amp current source. Could be any value, I chose 1 amp. And then I compute what is the value of V1A. How? I write some M and A equations like so. And solving that M and A equations, I obtain the voltage OY which is V1A. That is V1A. Why? 5.571 volts. That is IA, 1 amp, the current we applied. And VA is the voltage 5.571 that appears across the current source when I do that, when I connect that source. Now repeat that test with a different value of the current source. I will use just 2 amps, just because it's easy. And to find the voltage that appears V2A, that is VB, we write the equations. Observe, the 2 amps current source appears here in the M and A equations, right? Current entering to node Y, to the second node. Solve and find that the voltage that appears in the 2 amps current source is 6.694 volts, that is VB. IB 2 amps, VB 6.694. We have now two equations and two unknowns. Uh, but um, uh, please observe one thing. Let me write side by side the MNA equations for the 1 amp test and the MNA equations for the second test with the second current IB. This one. You notice that they are just the same. The only difference is the value of the current source. So what? Well, that if you write those equations in the HP50G like so, you see where the 1 amp is there in the second equation. We can just solve the system, find what is the value of VA, and then once we have that written on paper safely, we undo, swap, down arrow, and edit that equation and change the 1 for a 2. Enter, swap, solve again, and find the value for VB without having to retype the MNA equation. Those are the equations, right? And the solution is 4.178 volts and 1.393 ohms. That is the equivalent Thevenin and Helmholtz circuit for that network. A variation of the two currents method is one in which we use IA equals zero, which turns out to be an open circuit test, and VA would be the open circuit voltage, which is just V7, right? We use IB then any value. In this case, let me use one amp, and the equations turn out to be this one, right? IA is zero, and uh, IB is one. Observe easy equations. VA is V7 and R7 is just VB minus VA minus V7. Sweet. 
and you're thinking, well, wait a second, a zero amps test is just an open circuit test, right? Then why do you call that a zero amps? Because then I use the same symmetry of equations for my calculator. That is all. That is all. Nothing magic about that. Think about this exercise. Read it. Stop the tape, and uh, and work on that. Will you? And then after that, you may unfreeze the video and see the solution. The lesson here is be mindful of the polarity of your carrying sources and of your voltmeters. Both may change the matrix and the right-hand vector of your system of matrix equations above. Eh? Careful with that. And that is the end. Thank you very much and I hope to see you again, rather meet you again, in our next video.